Okay, so we're gonna solve these inequalities in graph. Go ahead and we're gonna subtract what first from the first one? What's our first subtraction? The nine. Negative 12 and negative nine is negative 21, less than or equal to seven X. We're dividing by what number? Is our symbol going to flip? No. Why not? Talk to a neighbor. Okay, what did you guys come up with, Tim? Why not? Thank you. We are dividing a negative, but we're not dividing by a negative, and that's the difference. So, negative 3 is less than or equal to x. Order matters, so what are we going to do with this? Flip-flop it. And let's start by also subtracting 9 on the right side. 7x is less than 7. Divide by 7. We get x is less than 1. Can we graph those two? Let's go ahead and graph them separately. We're still relating this to what we learned in 1-5. So if x is greater than negative 3, it's greater than or equal to. This is going to be a solid circle going to the right. Oh, sorry, thank you for letting me know. Zero, one, and two. Again, these graphs are just quick zoom-ins. We don't need to put tons of detail into them. I'm circling the one, and what direction is it gonna go? Now, picture if those were on the same number line, what would happen? It would be trapped in the middle, wouldn't it? They're not going to run across each other. They're going to stop. Did I make a mistake that you guys are seeing? No, I just combined them. Okay. Okay, well, let's go to the top of the next page where we're being given what is the solution of negative 12 is less than 7x plus 9 is less than 16. Before we start it, I want you to talk at your table. This is related to the two problems we just did. See if you can find the relationship by comparing them. What was our first action on those other two? Subtract the nine. What does it look like our first action is going to be here? But we're going to subtract the 9 from all three parts of this inequality. This is an and inequality written without the word and. What they have in common is put into the middle. <coughs> negative 12 is still going to be negative 21 is less than or equal to 7x is less than 7. What was our second step on the other two? We divided by on both of them, didn't we? In this case, we're going to divide 7 because it's in the middle with the x and we're still trying to get the x isolated. We're going to divide it in all three parts of the inequality. They're all positive 7s, so no symbol flips. Negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 1. Let's show what that would look like on a graph then. We have negative 3 down here. 0 would be about here. And 1.
again, I'm really visual. And if I don't do this next step, I personally make mistakes. You don't have to do this step if you can see it without it. I like to rewrite this as x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and x is less than 1. Why would that help me as a visual learner? Talk to each other. Oops, I didn't put the D on my and. Okay, why would it that help me as a visual learner before I start to graph this? I've put this into the order matters setup, haven't I? I've taken the X out of the middle. Oops, sorry, thank you. I've taken the X out of the middle. Of the, this is the answer right here. But for graphing it, can you see how there might be mistakes if we don't rewrite this left part? Okay, so we're going to circle the three. And we're going to fill it in. And we're going to circle the one and leave it open. And what does this say that the line does from the three? It goes to the... And what does this look like here? So again, I'm not saying you have to take it from this format to this format, but in graphing, it can greatly reduce your mistakes. Because I've seen people graph this where they think it looks like an or, because they see this symbol going to the left and forget that the X is to the right of it. Okay? Go ahead and try number three. Sierra, can you answer the phone, please? Sierra, can you answer the phone, please? Sure. 